Hey everyone, welcome to the Carnivore Revolution. I'm Serena. And I'm Jess. We've gotten some new followers recently, so we wanted to share with you guys exactly why both of us decided to do the Lion Diet for the month of January. We also wanted to share 10 reasons why you should try either the Lion Diet or becoming a carnivore. The reason that I wanted to do the Lion Diet for the month of January is because I have always wanted to give it a try, but I was really nervous about it being beef only and me getting tired of eating only beef. So it was really intimidating to me. But in July, actually, I have a note on my phone from July that has that says, try the lion diet for 30 days. So it's been a goal of mine for, for a while. <laughs> and I finally pulled the trigger because January is World Carnivore Month. So I thought it would be a perfect time to try the lion diet. I was just really curious if I noticed a difference between carnivore and lion because I did get really great results with carnivore and I wanted to see if there were still things in my diet that I needed to take out and I am actually finding that there are. So for me, I actually have done the lion diet before, but not as strict as I am now because listen, I love butter. And so in the past, when I've done the lion diet, I kept the butter in my diet because it's just one of those things we do as humans is we try to keep the one thing we can keep when we're trying something new or we fall back into old habits. And so, so while I was successful with it, it wasn't really the true lion diet. So when Jess and I started talking about trying to make it a challenge for ourselves, I decided this time I was going to do it right. No butter for me. Although I do miss butter. There are several things I miss. We can get into that later. I did think the same thing Jess thought. Maybe there are some things in my diet that are causing some inflammation, or maybe there are some things in my diet that aren't making me feel 100% the way that I could feel if I gave them up for a little while. And that's the cool thing about the lion diet and carnivore too, but the lion diet, especially it's such a great elimination diet. Now we get to add things back in and see what things really bother us. So after we started the lion diet, Jess and I were talking and realized that we prepared for the lion diet in two different ways. So I come from a background of binge eating and eating disorders. I was bulimic for a long time. And even once that stopped, I continued to binge eat and then punish myself for days on end by eating, let's say only lettuce or fasting for long periods of time to make up for the damage that I had done with my binging. And so when I started preparing mentally for the lion diet, I ate lots of cheese. <laughs> I mean, I ate a lot of cheese <laughs> because I knew that I was not going to be able to have cheese. I also ate a lot of chicken wings, which not coincidentally are the two things that I missed the most <laughs> on the lion diet. So for me, it was all about while I was getting ready for it, it was, I need to eat as much of these things that I won't be able to have. I need to eat as much of them as possible before I start the lion diet, because I knew that I was going to miss them. But it turns out Jess didn't have that issue at all. Yeah, so I'm a little bit different. I don't have a history of binge eating. I do have a disordered eating past, but with me starting it, I was able to just start it. Uh, I did drink coffee up until the very last day, but I didn't drink more coffee or anything like that. But I, I did still have coffee and that was the and still is the one thing that's been the hardest for me to give up is was my coffee. And I was even drinking decaf. So it's not like I was needing the energy from it. I was just literally miss. I'm literally just missing the taste of it. <laughs> so to prepare for it. Yeah, I, I didn't really do anything other than buy a whole bunch of beef and then start eating it. <laughs> so now we have 10 reasons that you should consider either the lion diet or becoming a carnivore like us. So the first reason and the reason that was very near and dear to my heart is gut health. I suffered from severe constipation before I went carnivore. I was only going to the bathroom once every couple weeks and Growing up, the problem was even worse. I was going to the bathroom once every three weeks. And then when I went gluten-free, it went to every about two weeks. I was only ever told to eat more fiber and it only made the situation worse. And the only thing that ever helped my gut and helped regulate my bowel movements was going carnivore. So gut health, and IBS problems are a huge reason that a lot of people 
start the carnivore diet or the lion diet. And there are so many countless stories of people getting healing, gut healing, trying carnivore and the lion diet. Now I never had issues with my gut or anything like that. So that leads us into my first one that's near and dear to my heart. And that would be inflammation and joint pain. Now I didn't have a lot of joint pain, but I will be 50 in May. And so it's something that you hear about older people have problems. And I was at the point in my life at 48, when I started carnivore, where I was waking up in the morning and just laying there and being like, is this what being 48 feels like? Like I just couldn't get right out of bed. I would have to stand up slowly and like stretch out my back a little bit. And I didn't like how that felt. And I would say to my husband all the time, is this really what it's like? Is this what it's like? I've run marathons and half marathons and countless five Ks and I've exercised my whole life, but is this what it's like to be 48? It just feels, it felt old to me. So I didn't have a lot of joint pain, but I did have that inflammation that was causing issues that I didn't know that it was causing. And it took me going carnivore to realize that. And it's interesting because I have a side-by-side picture of before and after where I weighed the same amount, but some people say I'm unrecognizable because my face was so much bigger and puffier from just inflammation, not even from losing weight. And so that's a huge one for me is just the inflammation part of it and that people don't know how inflamed they are. So there are things wrong with you that you don't even know aren't supposed to be wrong with you at whatever age that you are. And the inflammation can make a huge difference in that. For inflammation, I don't know if this counts, but as I mentioned before, how I had suffered from severe constipation, which means that when I would go to the bathroom, I would have to push very hard and would have bleeding and pain and all sorts of awful things. And I actually experienced like back pain. Like I had similar back pain that my mom had after she gave birth to me, Um, which is why I always thought that God was preparing me to have twins or something. So I had like back pain. And then of course I was a little overweight as well because I had like inflammation and my gut was just full of the fiber that it was not able to digest and the gluten that it wasn't able to digest. Then when I did go carnivore and I lost a bunch of weight, I haven't suffered from that back pain anymore. Like it used to be to the point where if I just bent down to pick up laundry the, and I did it the wrong way, I would throw out my back and I'd have to lay on, on the bed for a couple hours until it got better. And I have not experienced that since the day I started carnivore. And then the next biggest reason is skin. I had horrible skin, which also kind of goes hand in hand with the gut health, because if your gut is blocked up with all this stuff. It's going to just push its way out of your body any way it can, which is why I had really bad acne growing up and up until I was carnivore. So from about 12, 13 years old to 29 years old, I suffered from acne and I tried all the medications. I tried all the ointments and nothing ever helped. I even stopped eating chocolate for a little bit. And guess what? That didn't help at all. Uh, (laughs) And the only thing that cleared my skin at 29 years old, uh, after all those years of suffering from acne was cutting out fiber completely and cutting out grains and stuff completely and just eating meat and some animal products. And then I am now even realizing that even um, dairy is causing me to have some skin issues too. And I need to continue to remove more of that out of my life as well, which is something that I've realized with the lion diet. So I never really had skin issues necessarily. I mean, I always had, you know, blemishes here and there certain times of the month or whatever, but I never had serious skin issues. But I will say that with the lion diet, my skin is even better than it was. Like my, I feel like I'm aging backwards on carnivore, but I feel like the lion diet has even taken it a step farther. I'm really enjoying the way my skin looks, the way my skin feels. Usually this time of year, I would have very dry skin already because it's winter here and I do not have dry skin. Just carnivore in general is so good for your skin, your skin color. Most people that are carnivores, when I see them in pictures, you can totally tell that they're glowing. I mean, carnivore just does something that nothing else does for your skin. It's the fat. Um, It's all the fat. It's definitely the fat for sure. And since you did mention PMS, I think that we do need to add that one in. So we'll have 11 reasons for everyone, but 
PMS is another huge um, thing that improved after I went carnivore. Before I was carnivore, I would have horrible, horrible cramps uh, to the point where I was in so much pain that I would shake uncontrollably and then throw up. Yeah, my PMS symptoms and my periods have improved immensely since carnivore. And I will say that I never had terrible PMS. I did have issues in the middle of the month. I would have pain that has gone away and I don't even know when it's coming anymore. I used to gain 10 pounds in the like two days before, and now I don't even know that it's coming. So I literally have no PMS at all. So the next thing we wanted to talk about is autoimmune issues. If you have any kind of autoimmune issues, usually those are caused by either inflammation or they start in your gut. So if you have skin issues like psoriasis or eczema or any other kind of autoimmune diseases, they absolutely can be helped with something like the carnivore diet. A lot of those things are caused by the sugar and carbohydrates that we eat and are usually very fixable with changing your diet. And the doctors may not always tell you that they want to write you a prescription because that's easier for them. And it keeps you coming back, honestly, sorry, but the best way to fix that is through your gut and through the foods that you're eating. We're only in control of one thing, really what our hand picks up and puts in our mouth. So take control of that and fix your health and get rid of your inflammation and autoimmune diseases. And weight loss is another huge reason to either try carnivore or the lion diet. When I first started with the carnivore diet, I lost 20 pounds of fat in the first month and I kept it off for over three years. Now that I'm on the lion diet, I haven't lost any weight, but I feel like my body is at its natural weight because I'm not losing anything. So I feel like I don't really have much to lose. And I'm also trying to gain weight right now in the gym, like gain muscle. It can help you lose weight if you need to. But the cool thing also about the carnivore and the lion diet is that it'll do what you need it to do. It'll do what your body needs it to do. So if you need to lose weight, it'll help you lose weight. If you need to gain weight, it'll help you gain weight. So for me in the beginning, I actually gained 18 pounds by fasting too much and not eating enough. So I think that was part of my body's way of healing and teaching me what I need to do. And it was very discouraging at the time. It was a very, very hard eight months for me dealing with the weight gain and trying to figure out why it wouldn't come off. I was discouraged. I was sad, but it was all part of my journey. And now I'm down 35 pounds and I feel amazing. I have all kinds of energy. And so like Jess said, it really will help your body just find its happy place. And so the weight loss won't always be immediate, but weight loss does usually come for people after their body has healed. We have lots of work to do after the years and years of damage that we have done with all of the diets and the overeating and the sugar and the junk food and the processed foods, and it takes time to heal. And so if you give yourself that time, your body will thank you and it will reward you. The weight loss is a huge reason why people will try carnivore or lion, but I do think it's, it is important to like hammer in the fact that this, this is more than just another weight loss diet or another weight loss fad. Uh, this way of eating is really about healing and, and healing yourself and healing your mind and healing your body, not necessarily a quick weight loss fix, but long-term healing. So the one thing that it has really helped me with and helped me heal from is my past eating disorders and disordered eating. And so disordered eating, for those that don't know, is the kind of thing that I mentioned before, like binging and then starving yourself for a long period of time to make up for it, or only eating lean cuisines for three weeks because you need to lose 15 pounds for an event. Those are actually signs of disordered eating. And I didn't know when I started carnivore that I was going to be fixed, that I was going to be healed from 35 years of eating disorders and disordered eating. I bought my first diet pills when I was 12. And if you name the diet, I have done it over the last 35 years. And this is the first time in my life that I am not on a diet, that I am not trying to lose weight, that I am not trying to figure out what the latest fad diet that's going to help me is. It is the first time in my adult life that I am free from that. And I heard a saying once when my kids and I were watching TV that addiction is the only jail where the lock is on the inside. And that was true Mm -hmm. for me with binge eating, 
my carb binging, my sugar addiction, and all of those things were fixed with one simple thing. I eliminated those things from my diet and I'm better. And people will say, it seems to me like you traded one eating disorder for another. And that is not true. I have never felt the way that I feel right now in my head. My head is clear. I don't have those things blocking me from doing the things I want to do anymore and from being the person that I want to be. Yeah. I always find it funny when people say that carnivore, the lion diet are just another type of eating disorder. And I feel like the people who say that are people who, if they claim to try it, then they, I don't know. I just have a hard time believing anyone who, who says that the carnivore or lion diet is an eating disorder. I have a hard time believing that they've actually ever given it a, a shot. I don't want to seem critical, but I've never once heard someone who's been on the carnivore diet or the lion diet for any significant amount of time, liken it to an eating disorder. And before I, before I was carnivore growing up, I was obsessed with calories, which I think is pretty normal, especially for a young female. That's kind of what you're trained to do is to just count calories and never go over 1200 calories or a thousand calories or 800 calories, whatever it is. So I was obsessed with counting calories. And what I would do is I would kind of like barter with myself to where I would say like, I can eat this ice cream. If I eat this ice cream, I will just skip breakfast tomorrow. I'll have a salad for lunch and then I'll work out extra hard in the gym to burn more calories. And then it'll basically erase this ice cream. So that's, that was kind of my disordered eating past. I never, I never, like I said, had um, like binge eating or anything like that. I, I did have periods of time where I would actually like starve myself to get skinny because I knew that it worked. I knew that if you ate less calories, you would get skinny. So I would intentionally starve myself to, to lose weight. And it, did work, but I was malnourished. I, I couldn't stand up very well without getting dizzy. Uh, I looked awful. Um, I wasn't very strong. I lost all my muscle. Um, so it, it, it was not healthy to say the least this way of eating. I don't track anything. I eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm full. I feel absolutely nourished all day long. I am happier and healthier than ever before. So yeah, that's why I have a very hard time believing anyone who ever likens the carnivore or lion diet to an eating disorder, which leads us into the next reason. Mental health has a lot of people still do not know how big of an impact nutrition has on your mental health. A lot of people think it's two separate things, but then once you actually try carnivore or try the lion diet, and then your brain changes, it literally changes you into a different person. If Serena and I have both said that same exact thing, that we feel like completely different people after eating this way, because before, before carnivore, I was depressed. I had anxiety. I literally hated myself. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I was so insecure. I didn't even want to look at myself because I hated the reflection staring back at me. I would just have nights where I would just cry myself to sleep because I hated myself so much. Or I would just like, if I was alone, I would just have moments of just like rage where I would just have to like scream to get the rage out. I had mood swings. Um, the littlest thing would set me off. I had extremely hard time working in a normal job because the littlest thing that someone would do would just upset me so much. So people would have to walk on eggshells around me and, and that would happen in my work life and in my personal life. So my mental health was not a hundred percent. Let's just say that. Um, and then when I did try carnivore, my mood swings stable, stabilized. I, I stopped getting such drastic mood swings. Um, my anxiety went away. My depression went away. I just felt happier and things just didn't bug me as much. And then now, even with Lion, my mood is getting even better, which that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. What about you? So mood swings for sure. I'm a mother of four. So I would snap at my kids more often than I should. I would snap at my husband more often than I should. And I think the thing to remember is that a lot of those mood swings where we're up and down, if you really sit down and think about it and look at it, I bet they match your glucose spikes, your sugar spikes from all your carbohydrates, from your meals and all of the sugar 
that you were eating before. And so I think that's important for people to realize that that is connected to what you eat, even if you don't think it is. And I know this is a, an analogy that people hate to hear, but it's so cliche and so true though. If you put the wrong kind of gas in your car, your car won't run right. And as people, if we put the wrong kind of fuel in our bodies, our bodies will not run right. And as far as like confidence levels go, I never would have been doing this two years ago. There's no way I would have done this. The confidence that it has given me and I feel empowered and I feel encouraged and I want to shout it from the rooftops and tell everybody about the way that I feel because of the food that I am eating. And I just think that it's so important that we make sure we're eating the right food so we can feel good mentally and physically, which brings us to brain fog. Now, as an almost 50 year old, I know I have lots of friends. I talk to lots of people online. There are many people that I talk to that definitely have issues with brain fog, trouble remembering things, trouble rem remembering people's names, remembering schedules, just lots of feeling like you don't really know what's going on. And for several years, a while back, I would tell my friends as a joke, I feel like I have early onset Alzheimer's disease because I can't remember things. Like somebody would tell me something and it would go in one ear and out the other. Like I couldn't, I couldn't retain information. I do not feel like that anymore. Now I'm not saying I don't ever forget things. I don't ever not show up. You know, I don't ever, I'm never late or anything like that. Those things happen, but they happen differently now than they used to. I feel like I know what's going on. I feel like I know who I am. And I think that makes a big difference, especially as we get older, because brain fog tends to just kind of get worse for people. And I feel like mine has gotten a hundred times better and hasn't gone back to the way that it was at all. And the next one is body odor, which was really surprising to me that it actually improved because all the time you just hear that when people see that you're on the carnivore diet, like, oh, you must have really bad breath. You must just have really bad farts, blah, blah, blah. But no, you actually don't have gas on this diet and you, your body odor decreases because you're not filling your body with a bunch of junk that all these little nasty fumes have to get out. But anyway, uh, before I went carnivore, I had really, really smelly feet and I had really bad morning breath, especially. And then now that I am on carnivore, I don't have bad morning breath. My feet don't stink. I don't really have a uh, bad like armpit smell, whatever you, what do you call arm? B.O. B.O. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. <laughs> I haven't had it in so long. I forgot what you even call it. <laughs> so I don't even really have bad B.O. Uh, the only time I get B.O. is if we go to the gym and I work out really, really hard and then I'll put some deodorant on. But other than that, I don't even really use deodorant anymore. Uh, so body odor was a huge surprise to me and a, and a pleasant surprise that it actually improves with the carnivore and the lion diet. I don't have any body odor that I know of either. Now I have a post COVID issue that makes things taste and smell different, but I'm pretty sure I don't have body odor. I think my, my kids and my husband would tell me, but I probably only use deodorant a couple of times a month at this point. It's just not necessary. First of all, I don't sweat as much just in general, even when I work out really hard, the sweat is different. I don't really understand that, but it is. And it certainly doesn't smell like it used to. So as far as I know, I don't have any body odor at all. I kind of like that. And I'm saving money on deodorant. So the last reason that we have listed that you might want to start the carnivore diet or the lion diet is sleep. Now I've always been a pretty good sleeper. I have had some bouts where I didn't sleep very well, but I will tell you that with carnivore and the lion diet, especially I sleep so well that if my husband doesn't come to bed at the same time as me, when he does come to bed, I don't even know. I don't move. I don't toss and turn. I've never slept like that before. I wake up sometimes in the morning in the same position I was in when I went to bed. And that I always wake up in the middle of the night, like to go to the bathroom or when I switch my position, I would wake up in the middle of the night as I was moving. I can't believe the difference. And I am really hoping that it's not because I gave up dairy. So that's my prayer is that when I start adding dairy back in, that I don't go back to like kind of tossing and turning in the middle of the night, because that would be really sad. But just in general, the lion diet, especially, but carnivore has helped me sleep so much better. And I think it's because my body isn't having to process all that garbage. There's so much stuff that we eat and do to our bodies that our bodies don't know what to do with. So they're 
overactive in the middle of the night trying to catch up on stuff that they don't that it doesn't get done. And so if you have trouble sleeping, I highly, highly recommend carnivore and or the lion diet to fix that and get you into a really good routine. So you'll feel rested and you'll basically just have a better life. I absolutely relate to that before when I was doing carnivore, I didn't really have any problems with sleep. And then when I started the lion diet, my sleep somehow got better. Like you're saying, I go to sleep. I fall asleep so quickly. Like when my head hits the pillow, I'm basically out and I am out like a light and I sleep through the whole night. Like you're saying, I don't toss and turn. And then when I wake up, I wake up because, you know, usually when your alarm goes off, you could, you could hit the snooze a couple of times and, and sleep for 10, 15, 20 more minutes. But with the lion diet, it's been, my alarm goes off. I'm awake. I cannot go back to sleep. I'm ready to start the day. And I have stable and sustained energy until my head hits the pillow and I am out like a light. And it has been amazing. <laughs> so in case you missed our point here, the carnivore diet and, or the lion diet are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments below or let us know if you have tried carnivore or lion and how you liked it, or maybe if you didn't like it, let us know. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on the Carnivore Revolution.